10 out of 10 for Tedo Norfuji and his Ozeki performance in July. But apart from him, there was not much Ozeki level sumo on display, was there? Takakesho was present for but two bouts, in the first of which he was caught by Dai Eisho's well extended arms and forced to improvise at the rope. And was then seen holding his elbow afterwards. And in the second bout, he herniated his cervical spine when charging into the blubber of Ichi no Jo, enforcing his early withdrawal. We've heard nothing from or of him since then, and assume he will fight for Ozeki's survival in September without all his faculties. In his absence, we simply have to let the statistics speak for him. Six injuries since he debuted at Ozeki in May 2019. No longer Mr. Freshface, having turned 25 on August the 5th, a key question right now is, will he still be in the ring at 30? As for Shodai, while we hoped things wouldn't be as bad as May, we, and I'm sure he, worried from the off that they would be. There was the customary full storm, this time in the form of a nice upward hitting charge into Takanosho, and smart exploitation of Nemesis Dai Eisho's raised elbow for the pushdown. But on day three, injured and soon to withdraw Endo flipped him over like an omelette while he fumbled for position, looking over the shoulder for a chance that never was. Wakataka Kage then rocked him with the right arm block to beat him for the third time straight. And dancing monkey Tobizaru kept pressuring from the right until he finally took that fatal step back. A lovely flick of the head there too to create the winning angle. A dogged inside left on Koto Eko was the least he should expect against a man who lost 13 bouts. But big Ichi no Jo could not be bullied likewise, trapping him with the frontal left before he'd even worked out a move. For all Shodai's theories of body temperature regulation in the July heat, he was faring worse than in Tokyo, with four defeats from seven. He then got his mid-tournament second wind, as he often seems to do, skillfully luring Hokuto Fuji into the scoop for a ninth win in their 11 head-to-heads. Then, narrowly continuing his good form against Meisei, with a firm inside left and commanding right clamp. He then scored a surprise slapdown over bogeyman Mitake Umi, who'd won four of their past five, in a match the fixture chiefs could have arranged for day 15, but of course elected not to. Inevitable leg trip defeat to Horsho Ryu then ensued, leaving him desperate for victory against Okinomi. Again, they could have given him High Flyers Kotonowaka or Tamawashi on that day, but Ozeki is a reward for past efforts, not a test of current skill, and Okinomi, who fell awkwardly on day 8 and lost every bout thereafter, was Shodai's reward. <laughs> of course he lost to Teranofuji on current form. Of course he lost to Hakuho and his fiendish tricks. And of course he was given a favourable fixture on day 15, against a man who, until May, he'd beaten eight times straight, and whose hip pain had clearly flared up.
Hurrah! The hierarchy cried upon seeing that his rank would be in no danger come September. But this is no grand success. While the bumbling Shordai clings to the second rank with trembling fingers, on the sidelines sits a mountain of a man who can keep Orzeki with his eyes closed and even post double figures with minimal effort, and yet is facing demotion to Division 4. And while we applaud Sumo for trying to create role models, paramount to all of us spending time and money upon it is sporting integrity. And at present, few beyond the most partisan of Shordai fans would say that exists.